Welcome back everybody, it's Lauren here with part two of planning your build. Hopefully you guys all had the opportunity to take care of some of that homework that I gave you at the end of the first video. And if you missed the first video, I'll make sure and put it up here somewhere above me so you can go back and find all the necessary tools to make sure that this video makes a little bit more sense. And with that all said and done, let's get ready and jump into the second part. So some things we're going to cover in part two, uh, a little bit about safety, putting your show on paper, which will then give you a lot of information to help you determine what things you need to order to do your show, setting up your props in X lights, which will give you a virtual representation of what your show might look like, and then time management. But starting out, really, safety um, is pretty important. There are things that can go wrong when you put your display up and you want to be as safe as you possibly can. I know in our household, we as a family made the conscious decision to not put anything on the upper eaves because we didn't feel it was safe to do so from a ladder. And we wanted to make sure that it was safe. I want to make sure that I'm around to put them up uh, every year for years to come. So we decided just to stay on the lower part of the house, which I know for a lot of people out there, they're going to say, oh my God, look at all that real estate that's untouched. And it was just a decision. There's nothing wrong with putting stuff on your upper eaves, but if you do it, please do so safely. Please use the proper safety equipment, proper ladders, proper supports. Some people even will go as far as renting a lift, which I think is a, an outstanding idea to do when you start going up to those heights, the second story, some people even a third story in a house especially because you're not just going to be putting stuff on the eaves, but possibly all over the sides of your house at that height. So, and these props can be heavy. And with a lift, you're able to do that safely. The, the only downside of using a lift is the expense, really. That's the only downside. And um, while they're not super expensive, they're, they're not cheap. It usually is about a couple hundred dollars to rent one for the weekend, as well as the cost to have it transported to your location, depending on how far away you are from the rental location. So, there are those costs and you're not just going to pay that one time. You're going to pay it at least twice. Once when you put up your lights and once when you take it down. So that's something if that's in your budget to do it safely that way, by all means, go right ahead and do it. Um, the other thing to think about too, when you put props up that high, you use a lift to put them up there. If something goes out during the show, which inevitably will happen and Murphy's loss is it's not going to be the arches on the grass. It's going to be that snowflake mounted at the top peak just below your eave line on your house. That's the prop that's going to go out of your rosary. That's the prop that's going to have a pixel that goes out where you have to then rent that equipment to go up and fix it or leave it out for the remainder of your season. So those are some things to think about when you do the upper part of your house um, and when you're going to use a lift to do that. Ladders, please, please, please make sure you do it with another person, whether it's your partner, your roommate, next door neighbor, your kids. You don't want to do it alone because ladders can slide, ladders can slip. No matter how securely we think they are, things can happen and, and you want to do things safely. So with cord management, there are just a few things you, you really need to pay attention to. Don't overload your circuits, uh, number one, by putting a bunch of cords into one power strip and then plugging that one power strip into maybe another power strip because you're going to octopus it into a third one. That's just asking for trouble. So try to spread out your electrical use. If you have different outlets, like for me, I have a, a dedicated 20 amp outlet in my upper eaves. I have a dedicated 20 amp outlet on the lower part of my porch, which you can see in that picture. And then I also have a, a third outlet that I use coming out of my garage. So it's on, all on three different circuits. So there's no worrying about overloading a, a house circuit. And I, I run everything clean uh, into controllers and I plug those controllers into just the set number of outlets that are in a plug. So I don't have to worry about that. You just don't want to 
have that tangled mess. Um, it, it can cause some issues uh, when it comes to, to electricity. The other thing is when it comes to the cords themselves, try to keep them neat. If they're a whole bunch of cords in your yard, which typically we do have a lot of cords running through our yard and by keeping them neat and tidy and maybe even zip tied into little bundles running down the same pathway, you're going to help prevent potential accidents that can happen when people get into your yard. And it, it will happen um, because people walk up to your displays and then they want to get a picture next to one of your props when it's all lit up and it's dark and they can't see things. So there are potential tripping hazards in your yard. Some people set it up where, you know, they think it's impossible with the props for someone to get into your yard, but people will step over them. They'll find a way if they want to get that picture. The other thing is if you are running electrical lines over your sidewalk on the top side to get to a grassy part in front of your sidewalk to put up props, make sure that you are properly covering those cords with one of those safety mats to prevent tripping because you will be held liable if someone who's coming up to see your show or maybe someone from your neighborhood's out jogging or running and they happen to trip over it then that could fall back on you. So try to manage your cords and manage that safety for your customers that are coming up to your house to watch your display and uh, make sure everyone has a safe holiday that way. Next, we kind of want to cover putting your show on paper. And, and that's why we had you do all that homework for episode one was figuring out all of your different props that you wanted to have and how many lights on each prop that you needed and the measurements of each prop line that you had, just so you would know what to put down uh, on paper here so that we can figure out. So I'm going to bring up a spreadsheet now. So this is where we're going to take a lot of that information that you wrote down from the first video in this series about all the different props we wanted to have in our display and how many pixels each prop would take. And that was either by going to the vendor site, if it was an actual prop, and looking at the description to see how many pixels belonged in that prop and what type of pixels that prop took. Or if it was an outline of a window or an eave line, we actually had to take the measurements of that particular space and write it down. So now that we have all that information, we're going to start transposing things uh, into spreadsheets to help us figure out what we want to do. And that's how I like to organize everything. And then I have a record in case I want to expand or change things. I, I have a simple spreadsheet that I can make adjustments to. But for my first year, like for the mega tree, I knew first year out, I want to do a simple mega tree. I'm going to do 16 strands, 180 degree tree, 50 lights per strand at two inch spacing, which would give me a little over an eight foot tall tree. And with the star on top, it would be about 11 feet tall. So it was a good sized tree for the first year. And so I knew 16 times 50, that's 800 pixels. Uh, the, the mega star on top wa was uh, 90 pixels. The leaping arches were 32 each, so I needed 128. For the pillar matrices, I, I went with a product that was uh, eight inches wide by, I wanna say about 84 inches tall. And that allowed me uh, to get uh, 168 lights per panel, but I needed two panels per pixel. So it's 336 pixels on each pillar panel that I made. And I made three of those. My icicles, was it another product that I bought from another vendor and they actually wore a hundred pixels for uh, five feet of icicles because of the across for the Eve line, as well as the drop for the icicles. And it was a pretty good on the math for that one. Cause I had actual 20 feet worth of Eve line. So I needed 400 pixels when it came to that. The windows were just simple measurements at two inch spacing. And so I came up with a little over 2,900 pixels for my base display. Even though later on, I added a matrix over my garage, which was 100 by 48 uh, inch measurement, which was another 1,200 pixels, which brought me over 4,100 pixels for my entire display. This is why it's good to kind of figure out your total pixel count ahead of time, because I wasn't sure on the matrix and added it later. I had an added expense because I couldn't get the pixels at the cheaper price I got for buying a larger quantity earlier as well as I had to pay shipping again. So by getting everything up front, you kind of can save a little bit. Uh, it adds up when you go from maybe, you know, 26 cents a pixel to 22 cents a pixel. And when you get, you know, a thousand pixels, that can add up. So once I had all of that information though, 
Then I needed to figure out how many ports I wanted to have in my particular display, which is why I have a second tab on my spreadsheet for prop layout by port. And so this process is basically going to help us determine how many ports per prop we're going to run. And that's driven by the number of pixels we want to put on each port. And there are a lot of factors that go into the number of pixels that you can put on a port. Uh, the first main factor, which we discussed in the first videos, are you going to be running 5 volt pixels or 12 volt pixels? If you're running 12 volt, you can typically run twice as many pixels per port on 12 volt than you can off 5 volt. What is your brightness level going to be set at? The lower your brightness level, typically the more pixels per port you can run. Are you going to power inject? If you choose to power inject, then the number of pixels per port is only limited by the number of pixels per port that that controller can drive. Or if you choose not to, you are then limited by the amount of power uh, that you can supply to that particular line. And typically, on average, you should have no problem running two to 300 pixels per port with 12 volt pixels when you're running between 20 and 30 percent. And I'm going to put a link to a video at the end of this video that Steve Nye from uh, Nye Family Lights put together on how many pixels you can run per port when you need to use an F amp to help boost the data and what factors may come into play, like how long is the cord between the controller and the first string of lights. It was a very well-made video, and I think after you watch it, you'll have a better understanding of what I talk about, why there's so many different factors when it comes to how many pixels per port you can run. There's also a great tool that uh, Spiker Lights put on their website. It's a pixel light power calculator, and I'll put a link to that in the description, which is something I highly recommend that you bookmark uh, because you're going to be going there quite often to figure things out as you start to build your display. So with me, you can see here I chose to do uh, six uh, different sections, five controllers in all. And, uh, you know, on my tree, I, I ran only 100 pixels per port on my mega tree, and I could have easily doubled that. I could have done 200. But on my mega tree, the reason I chose to do that, because I've got 16 strands, 50 up and 50 down. If I lost a pixel, then I'm only out two strands, where if I doubled it up, I would be out four strands until I could do a repair. So that was the reasoning why I chose to go to 100 pixels per port on that particular prop. Um, you can see some of the other props, you know, by the left porch, you know, I've got my, my matrix, uh, each one runs off two channels and then uh, my icicles runs off one port and it's 200 pixels. My window 160 off from one port and etc. the garage matrix, which I added on later on each channel was an even 200 pixels on that particular prop. And I ran that at 30% brightness and had no particular issues. So this helps you determine the number of ports that you're going to need. And now I'm going to take you to a final spreadsheet, which you can find this spreadsheet uh, in the X lights um, Facebook group. And it's under um, resources up there in, in the in the file section. And it's, it's a great spreadsheet. And I'll put a link to that also in the description. And this one's going to help you determine the amount of power that you're using per controller basically to see a total get a total understanding of, of where you're at uh, and, it, and it's a good visual representation so let me bring that one up here real quick so the nice thing about this spreadsheet is it's going to kind of give you a more visual representation of the kind of power uh, and amps that you're pulling through each particular line and through each particular prop or controller box depending on how you have it set up the only thing you really need to put in is the description and the pixel count and then adjust the brightness to how you want to run that particular prop. Um, it even has an area for start channels if you needed that, but I changed that to pretty much just put in what that controller is. So like my mega tree uh, has got two 350 power supplies in it and four differential receivers. And I kind of clip arted a picture of the receivers in there just so I could have a visual representation of what's in that total box. 
And if I went over, it, it would highlight saying, oh, there's something wrong. You're running either too many pixels or too much brightness. You need to make some adjustments to see how it's going to run completely. So it just gives you kind of a, a nice overall visual representation that you can put in your toolbox for when you're building props or thinking about expansion or building your first display to kind of give you the whole total layout. This is what I'm going to be pulling and this is what I'm going to need. And as you can see, none of my boxes have an issue of coming even close to the 350 watts of power or going over the 20 amps um, that can be handled by that particular receiver box. So I'm all within uh, easy use uh, with the amount of pixels I'm running anywhere from you know, 100 to 200 pixels per port. So now we should probably have a better picture of what we need to order from our particular vendors out there. As far as the controllers go, whether you're going to do uh, pre-built, which you can purchase already built together with the power supplies all set, or if you're going to go DIY and build your own, which is what we are going to be doing. And in, in our scenario, it looks like we're going to end up needing to order an F48, and we're going to need nine receiver cards for the different controllers that we're going to have set around our yard to run the whole show. So that's what we're going to need on the controller side. On the light side, based on our numbers from our spreadsheet, we need 4,100 lights. I highly recommend ordering at least 10% more than what you need to cover lights that burn out or additions that you decide to make last minute. Um, I know for us on our mega tree, we did two strips of 50 extra just in case we had a line that went out during the show. We could easily just replace that whole string and then fix the string inside, whether it was soldering out the old light with a new one or determining what the other factors that caused the failure were and making those adjustments to it. And then it would become the backup at that point. Uh, so that's kind of one of the reasons why we ordered extra lights. So for myself personally, I would probably order 5,000 total lights, which is about 900 more than what I need for this particular build, just to make sure I have plenty of backups and stuff for expansion. As far as props, that's just a matter of reaching out to the vendors for all the different things you're going to need. So for me, I went out and got a mega tree kit and I got my arches and my matrixes for my pillars and my icicles I purchased from a vendor, which will uh, go over some different styles of icicles in a future video that we are planning. And then I got the strips to put all my lights in for my outlines on my windows and things like that. So that covered my props. And as far as miscellaneous, that's just going to be things like zip ties, uh, tools you may need like wire strippers or soldering irons if you're going to do any soldering, different things that you may not necessarily think of right off the bat, which is why Amazon is your friend for those last minute things you need, or hopefully you have a, a local hardware store that you can run down to to pick up some of those things. And now it's kind of fun to see what your display is going to look like. And we can do that by using the X-Lights tool to drop all of our props in, as well as uh, our picture. And then we're going to load just some random effects so we can quickly see what everything is going to look like on our display. So let's jump right into X lights. All right, so we got X lights up and running. We've preloaded in the image of our house, and we've also set the transparency at about 70, which is just light enough where we can see our house, but dark enough also where we can see the props that we're going to drop onto the model. And we're just going to go through and drop everything in from the kind of example we've been running through of my first year's build so you can kind of see that process so we're going to grab a tree and bring a tree in here and we'll drop it down stretch it out and bring it over here and then we want to make sure that we make the tree correctly so our tree is 180 degrees it's not 360. and we have eight strings of 100 lights and two strands per string, which will give us our 16. So there is our tree. It's a little fat. Our tree is actually a little skinnier. And now we're going to get our star and put it on. And our star, though, isn't a one ring star. Ours is a three ring star. So it has three layers. So we change that to three. 
and it is 90 lights total. The inside ring is 20, and the next ring is 30, and the last ring is 40, which gives us our 90. And there's our three ring star. We'll make it a little bit wider, set it up there. And now we're going to do arches. So we'll grab our arch and bring it down, stretch it out. I know you see that's a big arch. One arch we're going to now say is going to be four arches. And now we have our four arches just like that. And we also want a little space between the arches, a little four inch gap. There we go. And now we have our four arches in there. And now we're going to do our uh, matrices. Oh, and our arches are only 32 lights per strand. So let's make that correct. So let's do our pillar matrix. So we're going to click on matrix and draw down our matrix. And ours isn't horizontal. Ours is vertical, which is what we're going to do. And the number of strings is only two strings. Each string though has 168 lights in it and each string of lights has four strands so there's our matrix so now we're going to just copy and paste oops let's copy it paste it in paste another one oops put our tree back and now we have our three pillars done just like that now we're going to do a window and there's a little create new window frame so we're going to grab that and we're going to stretch it out line it up here and then we have to tell it that our row of top lights is 34 and our left and right are 29 and our bottom is also 34. So now our window's done. Now to do the doors, we're gonna have to use a polyline to do this, which is a little bit different than the window one. So we'll grab polyline and we'll dra drag it up for one, click, over, click, down, click, and then to get out, you hit escape and that stops it. And we also wanna tell it that we wanna Put our pixels in by individual segment. And the first segment on our door is 43 up. The second segment on our door is 23 across. And the last segment, of course, is 43 going down. Which did not look right there. Oh, well, because it didn't take the 43. There we go, 43. There we go. Now we're going to do one more for our garage. So we're going to go up, click, cross, click, down and click, and then escape to get out. And again, we're going to do the same thing that we want to do the individual segments. And segment one on our garage is 42. Segment two on our garage is 96. And again, 42 coming down. And that's going to give us our garage. And the last thing we have to put in is going to be our icicles. And right up here is the little icicle, create new icicle. So we're going to bring this one over. And we're just going to do one little segment here, the first segment. And we're going to say that it's going to be 100 pixels. And it's going to be what we call alternating nodes. And the pattern on mine is called 1, 8, 1. So it's 1 across, 8 down, and then 1 up is going to be the pattern on that. And there you can see the icicles. So now I'm going to take that and I am going to copy it. And then I'm going to paste, oh, not the circle. Let's, let's get our icicles and copy. And then paste. And then we can take and bring this one. 
find there. I'm going to paste again. And we're going to bring this one over here, but we're going to tilt it a little bit. I'll bring that up here and then tilt these down. And maybe one more. I'll put this one over here and bring this down to there and tilt those down. So there are our icicles. So now we have all of our props on our house. Uh, let's line up the star a little bit better there. That's kind of the basic layout of what we're going to do. So now just to see what our display might look like, let's go into um, our sequencer. And we're just going to load in. We're going to say that we're going to do a new sequence. And it's going to be a musical sequence. And we're just going to find um, some audio. doesn't matter what we're going to pick. So we're just going to pick pick one song just to put in there and say that it'd be 40 frames per second and done. And that's just going to put a basic track in there with all of our props. And then we're going to go to our timing. We need to give it just a little basic timing track. So we're going to add timing and let's just do uh, a beat one that will work. And now we can go in and just kind of highlight some of these cells and we're going to right click and we're going to say create a random effect. And this will give you a chance to see different effects on different props and it's going to put them on everything. So while we're waiting for this, it may take a little bit of time. Then we'll be able to see kind of what different things look like on all of the props that we have in our display. And that kind of makes it fun because then you can actually go back and click on individual props and see individual effects and know what they do and what they don't do. Um, a good way to get familiar with some of the basics of all of these different effects that you have lined up here across the top. And, and they all look different on different props. Some are horrible on certain props depending on what the effect is made for. Um, and that's something that you kind of learn as you go. So we're almost done here. And then we'll be able to kind of give it a little play and see what it looks like. All right, we got it all in there. So let's take our uh, transparency now and take it down to 90%. So now it's pretty dark. Now let's go to our sequence and we're going to bring up our main little window here. And you can kind of see different props as it's moving along. And that just kind of gives you a good visual representation of the different things done by different props. So that kind of is the basics of what your show is going to look like until you get a sequence and start doing your sequencing. And with that, we're going to move on to the final part, which is a little bit on time management. Starting as early as you possibly can is probably one of the best pieces of advice I can give. This hobby will consume a lot of your free time. And the later you wait in the year to start this process, the more of a crunch you're going to feel under as you approach the holidays. Not to say that it can't be done. Uh, we have seen people do a 10,000 light display in a, in a matter of weeks. But the later you start in the year, also you have supply issues when it comes from the vendors. They tend to run out of things the closer you get to the holidays. So the earlier you plan, the better it is, the cheaper prices you can get on stuff from some of the vendors because they'll have pre-sales and, and pre-buys. So those are things to look for by starting early. Try to stick with your plan. If this was, you know, your original setup was, you know, for 3,500 pixels, I know you're going to see stuff as you're building. Oh, I want to add this. I want to add this. And I want to add that. Wait till you get your basic plan built and ready to go. And then if you have time, 
you can add to it. And it's a lot easier to add or drop that one new prop into your sequencing to add sequencing just to that one piece or to map it in from, from other parts. So try to do it that way. That's what I did. I built the first one and then I realized, hey, I want to add tombstones for Halloween, which I did. And I want to add a matrix over my garage. And I, I finished with my build just uh, just a little after 4th of July is when I finished. It took me about four and a half months to build everything and all my props. And then that gave me plenty of time to get it all done. And to start for Halloween was kind of my pre pre-run to make sure everything was working well because you want to have time if you're not going to do halloween make sure you have some time where you can set everything up i did it i set it all up in my backyard uh during the summer and had a little summer show over a weekend uh, with my friends that came over so they could see what i was planning on doing and it worked out very well uh, do some multitasking uh and i don't mean by doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff but if you're watching tv at night that's a great time to maybe be pushing some pixels in to get Get your wife involved or get your kids involved. Pushing pixels while you're watching TV is no big deal. And pushing pixels is going to take up a lot of your time, believe me, when it comes to putting this together. Very monotonous work, but if you're watching a good show or a good movie, it goes by a little bit quicker. And try to take a few breaks. Um, don't, don't chew up every weekend and every single moment on every weekend to do this. Try to do it in chunks, a couple hours here and a couple hours there. Uh, it'll be much more enjoyable for you. And, and your family might enjoy you being around a little bit more also because this, this is kind of a, a family hobby. So keep that in mind. Well, everybody, that's going to wrap up this two-part series on planning the build. Hopefully you got a lot of good information out of this to help you in your planning stages as you move forward to showcase your new display in the coming months. We got a lot of great things coming up here in the future. We're going to be doing a build series on controller boxes for the DYIers out there. We're going to build an F48, an F16 with an expansion card, as well as some uh, receiver boxes for our yard. And then we're also going to do some product uh, showcasing as well as some comparisons. And the first one in that series, I believe, is going to be on icicles, where we show you all the way from DYI to props that you buy from different companies that are out there so you can see a whole spectrum of the different options for icicles. With that, if you did like us, we'd appreciate it if you gave us a thumbs up, maybe even share this on your social media or click this subscribe button over here. Don't forget I posted a video down here for Steve Nye's uh, Nye Family Lights on pixels and how many you can run. And with that, we'll see you all next time. Thanks so much for your time.